Welcome to Solar PV TV. I'm Diana Deem, and we are right here in Anaheim, California, meeting with the leaders from around the world in the solar industry. What's happening? What's hot at Sullivan Solar out of San Diego? Yeah, well, there's actually some changes that are taking place right now uh, with net metering ending in the San Diego Gas and Electric Utility Territory. It's going to be the first region in all of California that hits its net energy metering cap. So what we're seeing is a huge surge in demand for business. Um, our first quarter numbers blew all previous quarter numbers. Um, typically, we see, you know, the summer and fall be the biggest numbers that we've ever seen, and it's just this entire year has been insane with the amount of demand that we've seen, everyone trying to get in before the rules change. Okay, so say more about that. Okay, in 2016, we the incentives go away, right? So how does that connect to what you just said? Yeah, so that's what really what everyone's rushing to get into right now. Um, the, the net energy metering cap, once that's hit, we're going to have... Um, what's it anticipated to be a less favorable net energy metering agreement in the state of California. So we're working hard with the governor's office. Obviously, Governor Brown has goals to really significantly increase the amount of distributed generation. So we're working, uh, but there's things taking place at the policy level at the California Public Utilities Commission. So there's a little bit of uncertainty that's there right now, but we do know that California's leadership is uh, really working to progress the environmental uh, sustainability movement and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. What's your strategy for 2016? What, what do you see as a, as a, a big ticket um, opportunity? Oh yes, definitely. Uh, we are a lot in the industry, people being afraid about the ITC cut right for next year and uh, this will probably impact a lot uh, the utility scale uh, segment of the industry and on the other thing, we see a lot of traction on residential and we are very excited to uh, to explore that with, with a lot of solution, new products that are coming to the market. And we see also a new trend for 1500 volt projects and uh, we, we do have also solution and bring right a, a new connector which is our EVO2 that is right uh, behind us that, that fulfill all these requirements. How do you see the future of the utility scale uh, solar parks and uh, um, solar installations after the year 2016. Do you still see a great opportunity or you are also thinking about changing strategy to smaller installations? Um, we are uh, working through with the DG. Uh, we do have some DG projects. However, we do not see it slowing down. As a matter of fact, uh, we're looking at alternatives now, uh, working with partners such as SunEd, First Solar, um, working through uh, our price per watt, trying to get that so where it's manageable without the tax credit. So you are not uh, scared and you are not stressed because of the lack of tax credits? No, not at all. Yeah, we're actually uh, looking forward to uh, working through this and, and seeing what happens. We would love to have the tax credit, but I think uh, ultimately we're preparing to at least get through uh, the large portfolio we have. We, uh, constructability right now, are working all the way through 2016. We're already looking at 2017. Dean, talk to us about this year. How was 2015 and, and what do you expect next year? Uh, 2015 for us has been gangbusters. Every year we keep just growing year over year, uh, sometimes over 100%. 15 has been pure awesome. 16 is going to be even better. It'll probably be our, our best year ever. We, uh, every time, every year we say, well, that, that can't get any better. It just keeps growing. It's been a great industry and we we appreciate everybody buying products from us. There you go. Throw some numbers out for us so that we can really understand the capacity and the impact that you're making both in the U S and internationally. Uh, we're looking globally at about 10 gigs of things coming out of Shoals this year alone. Domestically or, or? Complete international. Okay, let's, let's talk about where you're focused internationally as well. Uh, we're all over. We're in the Middle East. We're in the, you know, the MENA region. We're in uh, Jordan, Egypt, China, Malaysia, uh, South America. We're where we're, we're everybody else in solar is trying to earn a living. You've actually released a lot of new products lately. Can we talk about the most recent release that's actually right behind us? 
Sure, we've introduced uh, Big Lead Monitor and Big Lead Assembly. It uh, replaces combiner boxes, recombiner boxes, along with, uh, we call it the Big Amperage Connector. So those three products together will take the EBOS price down by half. Uh, we're having customer claims that they're installing 60% quicker in the field. So it's hopefully going to change how the landscape of solar is installed, and we basically have made one big overgrown USB plug-and-play system. In the U.S., we were very present. We started our localization with a partner, Schultz, uh, from Tennessee. Uh, they are building our inverter on behalf of us. So the reason behind it, we have a very compact design. So we are settling the power supply unit into the boxes, Scholz is building cabinets and stations. We are buying it back from Scholz and sending it to the customers. Scholz is more than just a job shop for us. We've aligned our products. Scholz is a, a global leader in the balance of systems, so we've taken their knowledge and our knowledge to, to build a system that comes together to try to minimize the total install cost for the customers. So uh, Scholz is our UL facility for the North American market and the, the collaboration is going quite well. We're jointly reaching customers together, not only in the U.S., but other parts around the world. We have a couple innovative parts of the system that collectively help significantly reduce the install cost of the system. So the EPCs, they're, they're concerned about their labor costs and, and the, the skill level of different things they need on site. So we have a complete turnkey package. So it's completely integrated at the factory, completely tested at the factory, and it's the, one of the lightest units on the market. So it's easy to get there and it's easy to set up and install. And then integrating with Scholl's BAC connectors and things like this, it helps take out of the labor from the field. According to today's situation, uh, Tomas, we will definitely see 1.5 gigawatt module shipping. Um, I personally believe it will be a little bit more, but 1.5 giga is definitely for sure. So Ryzen Energy is the f in the family of uh, over one gigawatt suppliers. Uh, what does it mean, actually? A um, lot of work to do. A lot of work has been done. But, of course, we need to do still more. And um, our focus is not to stay at 1.5. Our focus is to grow in an economic way, to be on the main supplier list providing solar panels globally. We just released our earnings for Q2, our second quarter this year, 2015, and we were excited to communicate that we achieved another record in terms of megawatt shipments, so we reached over 512 megawatts, and also with a gross margin that is quite decent, around 20%, so it's quite stable. And at the same time, we raised our expectations for the year 2015, so we expect uh, to reach over 4 gigawatt, 4,000 megawatt of sales in global basis. And we are very happy here to be in Solar Power International in the USA with you and with the people for Solar PVTV. What's ABB's plan to support these developing countries with solar? So uh, this is a very good question. We, we have uh, several things that we are doing now in developing countries. One is of course supplying solar, solar systems. But another one is uh, we are developing uh, storage and microgrids. Okay, Microgrids are applicable to countries where they cannot have, uh, uh, they don't have a, a established uh, conventional grid. And so microgrid applications in developing countries will play a huge role for uh, economical growth of these countries. Okay, so Alex, how are developing countries going to pay for solar? Uh, well, so uh, there is a there are many programs today uh, by international banks and international countries. Say U.S. Uh, have uh, a, a established program to help uh, 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 solar energy uh, penetration in Africa, for instance. Yeah. Uh, President Obama established this program uh, recently and other countries in Europe have similar supportive, uh, financially supportive programs to develop uh, to, for, to, for the developing countries. What, what became evident that without electricity the economical growth it will be very limited. So countries are looking now uh, and banks and international in, uh, financial community are looking how to bring more electricity to the developing countries so the evolution will be faster. 
Thanks for watching and thank you for joining us for this amazing journey into the world of solar. We're looking forward to seeing you next year, 2016, in Las Vegas.